Hey guys, Rob Skiba here. So, of course, we are all by now familiar with the Gleason Standard Map, the azimuthal equidistant map of 1892, right? Uh, we've seen this map on many videos, certainly here on my channel, anyway. Uh, but, wow, I just found something really cool. Somebody sent me an email about an article that was posted yesterday, December 18th, 2017, unique ancient map depicting the Earth as seen from space restored digitally. In 1587, Urbano Monti, 1544 to 1613, a little known cartographer created an amazing hand-drawn 10 feet by 10 feet map. Not only does the map depict the Earth as seen from space when directly looking down at the North Pole, but it's also filled with incredible images of foreign locations and astonishing mythological creatures such as, for example, Siberian unicorns, ship-attacking mermen, and terrifying giant birds. You scroll down here. Amazing mythological creatures have always fascinated people and now we have a chance to view them through the eyes of our ancestors. This unique world atlas has now been restored and digitally stitched together. Cartographer Monty, who was very interested in geography, was from a wealthy family in Milan, Italy. In 1585, he met with a Japanese delegation, and scientists think the map he created is the result of his meeting and stories he heard about Japan. The World Atlas contains numerous names within Japan, which don't appear on other Western maps created at the time. Some more interesting pictures here. Collector David Rumsey, who bought the ancient atlas and donated it to the David Rumsey Map Center at Stanford University, which he founded in 2016. Look familiar? We'll uh, zoom in on those in a minute here. Monty's map has never been properly studied because, uh, a little typo here, it's been hidden for centuries. Monty created his map 18 years after Gerardus Mercator, the best known map maker of all time, made the map that is used today in most classrooms and smartphone apps. Mercator's great contribution to cartography is that he changed its nature with the help of his artistic enhancements and forever altered ocean navigation with his projection method, which was the first influential invention of early cartography. Monty, on the other hand, wanted to show the circular nature of the Earth. According to Rumsey, Monty's work is much more than just the map. It's a whole scientific instrument. Monty's amazing map has been digitally restored and you can view all the individual sheets here. And if you click on this link right here, it takes you over to this website. And this is where it gets kind of funny. It's also extremely interesting, but it gets a little bit funny toward the end here. Um, this was apparently published in November 26, 2017. Largest early world map, Monty's 10-foot planosphere of 1587. An extraordinary 60-sheet manuscript world map made in 1587 by Urbano, Urbano, I don't know how you pronounce his name, Monty, has been added to the David Rumsey map collection at Stanford University. At 10 foot square, this map, or planosphere, is the largest known early map of the world. It was hand-drawn by Monti in Milan, Italy, and only one other manuscript copy exists. The digitally joined 60 sheet map image below is the first time the map Monti made has been seen as one unified map, as Monti intended in the 430 years since it was created. See all the individual sheets here. So if you click on either one of these two links right here, it takes you to this page where it shows how it was originally laid out. And what's interesting is this is the key right here. If you click on this, this is the only time anyone has ever seen the whole thing completely assembled. Again, look familiar? <laughs> Yeah, so uh, this is the key that they use to take all of these individual images and stitch them together digitally to create this big picture right here. Crazy cool. Uh, you can read more about it, check all, all this stuff here. And this is what I found kind of funny is, uh, of course, he's got all these interesting creatures and 
you know, uh, editorial comments throughout the whole thing here. And images of how the sun and moon work. And you get down toward the bottom here. When we geo-reference Monty's map and then reproject it into Mercator projection, we immediately understand why he used the north polar projection instead of Mercator's. Monty wanted to show the entire Earth as close as possible to a three-dimensional sphere <laughs> using a two-dimensional surface. His projection does just that, notwithstanding the distortions around the South Pole. So they're basically saying that he was a believer in the globe and he's forcing a projection into an azimuthal equidistant map, uh, North Pole polar projection. And he's just fantasizing about Antarctica, apparently, uh, the, the, the lower regions here. Uh, because obviously on a globe, it would be much, much smaller. Those same distortions exist in the Mercator's world map, and by their outsized prominence on Monty's map, they gave him a vast area to indulge in all the speculations about Antarctica that proliferated in geographical descriptions in the 16th century. While Mercator's projection became standard in years to come due to its ability to accurately measure distance and bearing, Monty's polar projections gave a better view of the relationships of the continents and oceans. In the 20th century air age, the polar projection returned as a favored way to show the Earth. Monty would have been pleased to see a modern version of his map used in the official emblem of the United Nations. Below is Monty's map geo-referenced and re-projected as plate carry or geographic. In this form, it can be placed in Google Earth. And so they took this guy's circle map and apparently decided to map it onto Google Earth where you can watch a little video of it play out here showing what his map would look like on the globe. Yeah, so let's have a look at the map here. Look at this thing. This is just crazy, crazy cool. And um, you can download these. I put um, each of the files I'm going to show you, I put them in the link below. I uploaded them to the Testing the Globe website. So if you want to check these out, and they're huge. They're huge files, so give it time to download. But, wow, these are crazy cool images. Now, you'll notice he's got, you know, sort of the standard view of the north um, with this divided region up here that you see in a lot of the ancient maps. But, wow, I mean, this is just a crazy detailed map. Lots of cool stuff to look at here. This is one version of it. Here's another one. Showing more interesting things in, uh, in the outer rim territory out here. And again, you can really zoom in and check this stuff out if you want to spend some time looking at all the interesting things that he wrote and drew pictures of. And uh, I assume it's probably in um, Italian, maybe. I don't know. I don't know what language it's in. But he's got a lot of interesting graphics here. And again, this whole idea of sort of a Mount Meru in the center. And then here's this other picture here, which is my favorite. And if you zoom in on this one, of course, he's got the equator lined out there and the two tropics it looks like right here and if you go up into the corner areas sort of like what the Gleason did the same thing um, looks like he's got the motion of the Sun and moon and stars maybe up there other interesting things over here looks like the directions of the various winds maybe again I can't read this Somebody who speaks whatever language this is, if it's Italian, I guess, might be awesome to spend some time doing a video and interpret this stuff. Crazy cool stuff here. So, anyway, something worth spending some time looking more into, I think. And uh, what I decided to do was 
create a graphic here that shows both maps side by side. Again, these files are all available in the description below, so feel free to download those uh, from the testingtheglobe.com website, or you can always go to this site right here and um, look up in the right hand corner and you can export lots of these images you know one by one if you want to I mean you can really go through this site and check it all out for yourself and I put the links to these sites in the description below as well all right so um, wow I mean could we have just discovered you know despite what these guys want to say these guys want to try to force it into a uh, globe model um, but is that what was really going on or was he trying to create something scientifically and practically accurate like it looks like he was doing here certainly spent a lot of time and a lot of effort into it but there you go it looks like we found yet another one of those things that make you go hmm so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video presentation if you did please subscribe to my youtube channel like the video and share it on your favorite social media sites there's a lot more to come so stay tuned and we'll see you back next time